Hey guys, it's Justin with Daily Dose of Canada, and I just thought I would show you guys this order that I just got, ordered about a week ago from S&J Hardware uh, for the Canuck operator. Uh, just to show, we're obviously clear here, in the magazine tube. Um, yeah, I just haven't really seen a detailed video online or anything that I ordered here, so I thought I'd actually just like show some of it. So yeah, ordered this from SJ Hardware. Uh, came in an MDT. So nice. Comes in plastic. So first off, I ordered the field stock for the Turcanelli. <laughs> or Canuck operator. Just kinda got a cut out there. Well, obviously polymer. I'll tell you what, it feels good. It feels solid. It feels uh, better than my, honestly, than my 870 polymer uh, field stock. I like the checkering. That'll be good, so I don't mind just... like a mounting piece for yeah that's for the stock here mounting piece I'll show how to do that too in a second here ordered some extra handguards just checking out uh one thing when ordering all this stuff guys just make sure you check it all out you know like there's no cracks looking at the finish of all the plastic or polymer sorry <laughs> looks good so straight set of hand guards right there there's that um, got a spare magazine tube so I'll have to cut that to length. And this is uh, Uncle Mike's end cap, four end cap for a 870. So I'll show you guys that, those two are gonna go together. And then this is what I really wanted from them. And I'll show you guys why. Come on, man. Oh, I really got this thing taped on there. Okay. So, this is what I want to do. So, what it is is the spare gas piston. healthy o-ring so there's one there's two same thing feel heavy duty look good threads look good and then the two pistons so I'm gonna take it all apart here and show you guys why I ordered this Give me a sec here. Okay, I'm gonna just grab some tools. Hey, so I'm back. Um, so what's kind of frustrating is the Canuck operator is a clone of the Benelli M4, and it's supposed to be used by the Marines, right? Or it is used by the Marines, so you supposedly don't need a tool, but. This is one problem I've seen, I haven't seen any videos on it yet, as you just need a flathead screwdriver for the Canuck operator to service the uh, gas system. I'll show you why here. So, obviously, unloaded, triple tail. So, take this off. So, 
this is the Canuck operator barrel gas system. So the problem is runs great. I've actually shot about and uh, here, sorry about that. I've actually shot around um I think just under a hundred rounds for this thing. Uh the only it had two just uh FTFs, failure to feeds. Um but honestly I I think it was user error because that was when my friend was using it who isn't used to shooting shotgun at all. Um, didn't malfunction with the exact same rounds when I shot it. So I think maybe he kind of like limped it. Um, but anyway, so to service this gas system, you take the, here, sorry. You take the, this out normally and you would, on the Benelli, you would use this to crank these, you put that through there and use this like a little wrench and lefty loosey, turn these off. But if you can see, there is a spring that comes through there, which makes it so I can't get nothing in there. But we do have the spot for our tool here, the flat end screwdriver. So what I do is I go through the barrel here like that and I painstakingly have to actually unscrew the whole gas system which the downside to that is the whole thing comes out the spring and all and plunger so I'll show you guys so just let me loosen it off here and it can come off no, no, not quite just hold my hand it's actually under spring tension. So, yeah. So, be careful there. So, there's the top of it. So, there's the top of the thing. And see, look now. The, now the spring comes out. It shows the spring plunger. And now, now this tube's clear. So, you can get your little wrench here through to loosen it off like the Benelli right but that's not very field operable operatable if you have to use a screwdriver so sorry here Here, just taking this off. It's like it might be on the, the O ring. Come on, baby, get out of there. Okay, so there. So, let's put this down. So, I kind of took a while to take that off. And something, if you notice, uh, this is just blued um, with your ring. So the whole thing. So now to get that back in, you just go, you put this back in there. And then you would actually, annoyingly, the neighbor's mowing his lawn. You have to kind of hold it. And get the thread pushed down on the spring while threading it, which you have to be careful not to cross thread. Sorry, doing it off camera. I'm actually having trouble here anyway, so as you can tell that's how much that's how annoying that is. So yeah, this is shit. So the ones I ordered are stainless. So that's the old one. This one's been traded or at least hasn't been blued. One of the two. 
stainless. It's got the O-ring. But see, right from the beginning, it's open. So it actually enables me to put this through to run it, right? Like a wrench. And it just has a plunger in there still, if you can see. It's retained by this pin. So a little bit different of a setup. Same O-ring, same gas setup. Looks like, does that look like the same diameter of hole? Those are the same ones. <laughs> Messed up there, sorry. There we go. Look at that. Hmm. That's interesting. So this came with the Canuck operator. The gas that wide. This is Technically the Salon TAC-12 one, but I ordered it for the, uh, for the Canuck operator. So let me see now if I can see the differences in the actual piston itself. So Benelli, or I keep saying Benelli, <laughs> Canuck operator. Attack 12. So, identical. Um, the only main difference I can see is that the edges of this are already wore down, maybe from the shots I already took. So, I'll have to decide if I want to use the old. Maybe I should try. new pistons. So we'll put that back in. And let's see if this threads. So this is the the Canuck operator gas system and I'm gonna screw in the TAC 12. Actually here sorry I made a before I do that I'm gonna just put a quick little thing of Oil just around the O-ring. That's it. Good. <clears throat> hmm. This might be kind of hard on camera, but it is a tight fit. I tell you what. because of the new o-ring oh yeah there we go so I got it in there just had to force it a bit the o-ring okay so I'm gonna be pushing it in as I turn it come on Operate with me. There we go. Oh, and there we go. And just sitting it around and around. So that's how this should be technically. So that's just how it would be serviceable on the field. Is you use the charging handle. the tool so I've noticed it doesn't fit in exactly some of the holes but it fits in the two opposite of each other so you can keep cranking it at least maybe not that one that one I'm just gonna finish cranking that and I'll be right back. Hey guys, so I got that fully seated on now. 
So we've got the two different pistons on there. Just to show the difference. So different placement of these holes. This one's got a spring through the middle, so you can't use the intended tool, charging handle, to operate it. So you need a flathead screwdriver on the end. And this one's open, just with a captive pin. Same plunger spring system. Um, and one thing I actually realized while doing it up is I actually can fit these through everyone. There was just a little bit of uh, machining metal still in the hole, so that's why I couldn't put it all the way in. So I'll put the other one on here quickly. Okay, guys, so got the two new gas plugs on, new pistons. So I'll make sure they can move freely. Both of them, and they're both snug on there with your charging handle. Check. Check. So that's good. So now let's move on to... So these are the ones that came with. Alright. So. This is a new one I got. Canuck. So on. So. Pretty much identical. Not the cutouts, everything, hey? So this is brand new too. My only initial thought is just this is flat, like, uh, flat colored polymer and this is shiny. Oh, and then the only difference is this has the indicator of which direction. So this says right. This does not. Um, so yeah, so let's see. So this is the salon. So let's see if it will mount on the camera. Okay. And left. <laughs> so it feels good. I think we got a match. I think it would be the same guys, just looking at the grooving on the outside. Um, honestly, this looks like it's a little bit deeper. Maybe a little bit more aggressive so you get a little bit deeper of a bite. Like These are a little bit more rounded. Uh, is just a little sharper maybe just because it's new but it fits perfectly so it'll definitely work so I'll definitely looking to get one of these uh, oops one of these uh, stippled eventually or one set so. that's the barrel and now my next Next thing is the stock. So now it's got the adjustable. I think there's in total, let's see. So fully back, so one, two, three, four, five, six. Maybe that was six, so then seven, eight. So eight different positions. So it's really good. I love how it's color matching. Quality is really high, really rubbered. You know, handles well. Um, feels really sturdy. You know, you can be aggressive with it. I'm not gonna break it, obviously. But this is what I'm used to. So I thought I'd try it out. Um, feels sturdy, like I said, so I'm just going to put that on and I'll show you guys quickly how to do that because I haven't seen online anywhere how to do that. Just one uh, Canadian nuts forum, so, or Canadian firearm nuts, so, just one second here and I'll show you guys how to do that. Hey guys, so I had to do a little bit of this off camera because it was honestly so hard 
to do, but I'm going to show it to you and explain how to get the collapsing stock piece here off of the tube because that was really hard. So normally, normally this sits over here and you depress this lever which pulls a plunger down so it can move along these rails in all these different positions. Length settings. So, I couldn't find a video anywhere on how to do it or anything like that. So what I did was, I found a for on a forum it said to drive, because this, this was over here, but it said to drive this pin out. So I tried to do that. Turns out this is plastic. So that doesn't work whatsoever that way. So what I did was I actually had to, that was kind of over there like this here. Come on. Not gonna get it. But what I pretty much had to do was take a screwdriver here and pry it off of this, pry it away pretty much so this side wall here would go this way off of this pin and it was what lies underneath it sits in this hole is a plunger and a pin like that so that plunger goes into that into that there Okay, so not all the way in, sorry. So actually just enough, okay, so I see. So you put it in just enough to hold the pin. So, and then the pin would slide through this hole. And there you go, the pin is now through. See that pin there, it's kind of loose still. Right, so then this piece here then see how the, it's got grooves in there the grooves go over that pin see how they they went over the pin there and then so that's locked in then you put a spring in the back here right here see this hole the spring goes right there right there Sorry, just a little hard to do this on camera, and it go and it pops actually on to those hinges. But see, I missed the spring. So what you'd have to do is decompress the spring and slide it over. There's a notch right there. Check and show it. See, there's a reason why I kind of did this off camera, because it's kind of an asshole. There you go, there's that spring, I got it out, but see now this is what I mean. So it's on there, completely, and at its farthest back setting it won't just come off, right? So like I said, screwdriver, kind of, it's for the camera, and I really just pried it off, kind of scared me. Pried it off, you know. Pried it off of there. The other side of it too. <clears throat> so it's off. And then, like I said, and then you send it flying. But the point is, is that it's got these grooves which go on a pin, which is what holds the plunger. So now, oh, the other way, this pin, so now it can come off. So now you just have the handle and the tube. So you just have to kind of put this between your legs, nice. somewhere secure. Vice would obviously be the best. But I'm in my house here, so 
and obviously turn it lefty loosey. Okay guys, so learning as we go here, I got the collapsible stock off. So this turns out was completely different from every forum I've seen or anything to do with the uh, TAC 12 or anything. So everywhere it says that this will be connected and to get this pistol grip off, you need to either put it in a vise or in between your legs and rotate it clockwise or counterclockwise off. Well, I gave it a few bangs and it wasn't budging. So I was like, what the heck? So I like inspected a little bit further. And so there's two holes here and you have to take an Allen key, unscrew them and voila, it just slides off with those two, here, I'll push one out. So, just two Allen keys, or one Allen key, but two screws there, and just screws right in the back of the receiver here. So, there's just those two holes there. So, I didn't have to do anything to do with the buffer tube, how you gotta take it back, undo the nut or anything, so like that, just stays like that. So, to finish it off, you put the stock over here, a quick wipe before I put it on. Put it on. And then, so just slid it on there, just like that. Just normal. And it came with this piece here. So obviously this is a fastener and actually a Allen key and a washer. I don't know. So, you can see through here, I don't know if you can see in there, but the buffer tube is threaded at the end. So you put that on, you put this, it says top, top. So you obviously put that towards the top of the gun in there like this. And you'll kind of see it fall in there into place. So maybe just make sure before I get it's on, I guess, that it slides into place there. You'll see there's two little spots where it sits, two little notches in the stock there that the screws kind of sit in. You just slide that back on. And it should be present right there, like it is, top. And then you... run the oh let me make sure that, that that'll actually work here so under, how much room does it give us you put the washer on put it through here so that'll be through there and then it comes up the other side and needs to lock into the buffer tube like that, but with the stock on. So yes, it will reach. Pretty good. So maybe instead of dropping it in, it's better to just slide it sideways. Make sure it's fully in all the way, top, yep, in. Slide that back on. Yeah, I can feel it on the buffer tube. Take this extra long Allen key that they provided and tighten it down. And then obviously when you're tightening it down, you need to make sure that you, I'll show it to you in a second here. Come on, baby. I'm having trouble getting it on there. Oh, okay, so it's towards the top. Nothing ever wants to work on camera, of course. 
There we go. So you get threaded. Start it on there. So before you definitely tighten it down, you want to make sure that the trigger guard here lines up and it's actually in the middle because it can be a little crooked there. There we go. And actually you even might be smart to put the trigger guard in here to make sure. So take your trigger guard, push the button on there. Yeah, so already I can tell you that it is tight, a fit. So that would actually have to come back in there. So maybe it's actually smart to loosen it off here a little bit more, a little bit more play. In the whole thing. So you kind of want it so it can wiggle a bit here. Definitely, there we go. So then you can put that in. Take your pin. And run it through. Maybe. Okay, so the pin won't go through. So, let's just see why. Okay, so it's because we're not high enough on the receiver here. So it's sitting too low. Okay, so I'm just gonna get it fitted here, guys, and I'll be right back. Okay, guys, so I got the trigger guard in here and slide this on, but my hole wasn't lining up the way that it said top up. So it took me a little while, but figured out it actually, apparently in Turkey, the top means down. So I put it down and the hole lines up perfectly. So I just got to thread it now here. So you want to just thread it on there. Use the Allen key, tighten it down. And as you're tightening it here too, you want to be making sure it's flush with the receiver. Everything's looking good. And then you can tighten it down. So I'm just tightening it. I can't tighten no more. Okay guys, so got the stock here tightened down. Um, so put the trigger assembly in and I just put the bolt in here just for the sake of time here. Um, so to finish it off now, if you have this back piece, I literally just put it on and then it comes with this uh, sling. Sw uh, sling stud here. And if you look, that actually has a mark on the bottom and that's what that screws into. So you make sure the top little hook is in there. And put that in the bottom. There you go. Make sure you don't cross thread it and screw it in. There you go, so it's forward. So that's on there, good. So let's put this on here quickly. bump down together yeah. should 
ready to go in there. Get a little mortar on the floor. And one more. Of course, I can't do it on camera. Um, okay, so one second here, please. Okay guys, so I was able to knock the barrel on finally. So now I just have to finish here by threading the cap on here. So grab that as tight as possible. Not a quick. Super quick wipe there. And yeah, so let's so let's see. Function tab. Function tab. So yeah, upgraded gas system and open stock. Good both shoulders. Everything works. I'm actually a lefty, so it's live. So, so yeah. Sorry for the. Uh, sorry for such the kind of choppy video and me kind of doing it as we went along, but I was kind of learning as we went. Um, so yeah. Thanks, guys, and hopefully this helped.